Hi there, it's Amelia and Delion with Spiritually Fit Yoga, and I'm going to be starting an interview for Project C, My Face. So my next guest is Yoga Shana. She'll be hopping on here in about a minute or so. But hello, Mia, welcome. And for those of you that are not familiar with Project C, My Face, I started this a couple of weeks ago, interviewing different friends on how to overcome camera shyness and how to gain camera confidence. And my next guest, Yoga Shana, she has a great following. She offers yoga tutorials. She's a yoga teacher. I wanna to talk to her about her branding and um, and that's it. And so who we've had so far, we've had Yoga, Yogi McGee. She's run yoga retreats with me. She was my first guest. And then we also had running on Venti. She shared about her um, teaching while she was running and as a running coach and now in her next chapter. And then also Georgia Blatchford. Also talked to her when she was in Tulum, Mexico and talking about how she has gained confidence in front of the camera. So it's just now about 12.30. So those of you that are watching, if you have any questions that you'd like to ask me or ask Yogashana, Hi, Yoga Shana, I see you're here. Go ahead and request to join when you're ready. Feel free to type in your questions in the chat box and ask, and we'll go ahead and answer them live. Or if you're watching this later, you can go ahead and put them in the chat box and then we'll, in the comments, and we'll go ahead and answer when we can. All right, so here we go. All right, Yoga Shana should be coming on any time. I just requested, or yay, Hello. requested join. How are you? Good, how are you? Look at you, too? not in not in yoga duds. Not, not right now. <laughs> I was this morning, we've moved on. <laughs> oh, you look beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, this is so fun. So I have not seen you since that class in um, Danville Years. at Just Be Yoga Years. when we were in the pandemic and had that tent set up outside. Yep. And um, yeah, has that been two years or more? Oh, more than two. Oh, more, more than, than two. two. I want to say three. Yeah. Three years. A long oh. time. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to move back. Every time I get on the yoga live, it cuts off the top of my head. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so I was, I was briefly, for people that were coming on, I was just briefly introducing this project that I started a couple of weeks ago, Project mm -hmm. See My Face. Love it. And how you are one of the people that I've been watching with awe. Oh, thank you. And if you, you. If, you know, if you know any of these people saying hello, hello. Oh, yes. Hello, hello. Yeah. Yeah, Coco Cuse. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering the name or the account. Thank you for coming. And I mentioned earlier, if anybody wants to put any questions in the comment box, and we'll answer as well as we Perfect. can. Um, so Project See My Face, and I've been observing you, like sharing oh, yeah. your yoga tutorials. <laughs> yeah, say hi to anybody that you know, your yoga tutorials. And then I have, um, I've been, well, one, not just showing your face. So that's how I first started this. Mm -hmm. It's like gaining camera confidence, um, overcoming camera shyness, which was which has been my thing. Um, right. But also you, I've been just fascinated by or impressed by your branding. Well, it's like you're you. so consistent, you. which is very opposite from my page. If you want to look at my page <laughs> and then look at look at Shana's page, it's like Shanna, I got, by the way, Shanna. Shanna. Oh my gosh, Shanna! That's Thank okay. you so Shanna, much. Shanna, it yeah. rhymes with banana. Shanna, banana. Got yeah. it. <laughs> I know it's a yeah. tricky one. Yeah, oh, yeah, your colors, your logo, just all of that. So I want to get into that. Yeah. And then also we'll we'll make sure that we also have you share your top three tips for um, I'm ready. for sharing on camera. So why don't you just share? Well, I know I know when you've moved, like where are mm -hmm. you right now? Where are you okay. living? What are you up to? And a brief introduction about, about who you are. Perfect. Yay. So I first Hi, Sylvia. went to yoga the first time 14, 15 years ago in New York City. My husband and I lived in New York City for a decade out of college. And after that experience, moved to the Bay Area. And after five children, I found myself in a little bit of a postpartum slump situation. Five? Five, five children. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, my twin, I have twin babies at the end, twin number four and five. Okay. And 
that experience, like I said, kind of a postpartum slump. So I did my yoga teacher training in the Bay Area with Just Be Yoga as a way to sort of like pull something back to myself. Like I needed to like separate myself from my family and do something for me. And my husband is phenomenal and wonderful and supported me and handled the children while I did that weekend training. Loved that great experience. And I was really digging my teeth into teaching when COVID happened. So we don't talk about that. Everybody knows how that went. In the meantime, um, my family and I made a move up to Sacramento. So still in California. I was born and raised in California. Love it here. But now we're up in the Sacramento area, just a little bit of a little bit of a change for our family, better fit for jobs and kids and space and all the things. So I'm up in the Sacramento area and have thoroughly enjoyed our time here. It was a really great move for our family and we're doing well. Um, because of my five children, I had to set a pretty firm boundary that teaching yoga once a week is all I can do. I have mm. lots of responsibilities at home and places to be and things to do. So that's my boundary once a week. And because that's my boundary, I used Instagram as a way that I can continue to share bits and pieces and ideas and things that I can work on at home and share online without it taking me away from my family, the way teaching at a studio, because you know, when you teach mm -hmm. at a studio, you have to get there half an hour early. You plan an event. It's more than just like, let me show up and teach a class. It's right. a commitment. And you really put your heart into that. Yeah. So I've used Instagram as a way to share and that, that fits my schedule as it stands right now, which, you yeah. know, years go by and things change. So that's how yeah. I've ended up doing what I'm doing yeah. right now. So let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, if the pandemic didn't happen, mm -hmm. would you have continued teaching in person? I mean, was it because of the pandemic and being forced to stay mm -hmm. home that you created this online presence or were you already planning that? Were you already starting that? The pandemic definitely took it to another level because I taught online for a little while, but the yoga studio that I was primarily teaching with unfortunately closed as so many did. Um, mm -hmm. So that was really my only outlet for a while. So I feel like that definitely was the big shove, the big nudge in the right direction that had me sort of shifting to an online space for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And you seem to specialize, and correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong, in um, arm balances. Yeah, arm balances are one of my favorite things. They're yeah. my favorite things to teach. Um, I find them to be just really fun. So in looking at the online space, I am a big believer. I can't be for everybody. I can't serve every, not every yoga yogi is going to connect with me connect with my approach, that kind of thing. So in serving my space, it was like, what excites me? What can I connect the most with people on? What can I sort of specialize in? Mm -hmm. um, and that became arm balances. So I share lots of bits and pieces, but ultimately I tend to really hone in on what can I share and particularly in that space of arm balances. Yeah, yeah, that's so mm -hmm. great, yeah. I know I have some, so many questions for you. Um, yeah. So do you have a marketing background or something? I mean, your, your page is so, or do you have, did you hire somebody you. to help you with the branding or everything no. looks so organized? Well, thank you. Yeah. That, and I appreciate you saying that because none of it is an accident. I did not hire anybody. The only thing I've ever hired is I've definitely hired photographer. You, I'll do maybe one photo shoot a year. So I have some professional photos, but in terms of branding and that kind of thing, that is all me. I've had access to some people with have helped me answer questions. And so I've settled on colors and ideas and, and, and that sort of thing, but it is a hundred percent out of my brain, just trial and error and a little bit of practice. But I, I really love that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so it, it, fits my personality and the kind of thing that I enjoy playing with marketing and branding and colors and all that. Yeah. yeah. Did you create your logo and like everything? Yeah. Created my logo, picked my color palette. I'm really great at Canva. Canva has so many tools to help you utilize your branding in an intelligent way. So yeah. Yeah. At all. Wow. Yeah. So, and I haven't, I haven't noticed 
but is that something that you actually offer as a service? Do you help yoga don't. teachers no, like create their sites and their branding? And no, have you thought I of that before? Ever. Maybe I should. Maybe I should put some thought into it. I, yeah. yeah. It's something I started pretty simple with just like a logo and colors. But at this point, I have a website and e-commerce and all of my branding matches and printed products that I provide. And everything is like all tied in together and it makes my soul happy this is very much the way my brain functions yeah. and my brain functions. yeah yeah I might have to hire you please <laughs> let's talk I feel because like, I'm not I organized like that way I'm all I over feel the like place so many people have like spiritual gifts like you're sent to this earth and some people have like these yes. gifts yes that you just can't recognize or replicate and yes. you look at them and you're like, wow, this is so awesome. And that's just kind of one of the gifts that I like my organized brain and liking everything just so that's just the way I came to this earth. Yeah. But other people are so creative and it's spontaneous and you know, that's stuff that I have to work at. So yeah, that's so great. I want to go back to a comment from, do you know this person? Um, K O U. U S E. No, I don't. So I wow. Don't. Super impressive. Your five kids must be proud. Yeah. I mean, whether it's, you know, doing the marketing or being a woman mm -hmm. and we have international women's day tomorrow is coming oh, up, oh, like man, celebrate, you celebrating, me. you know, that we can be entrepreneurs yeah. and like create our own, our, our own thing, our signature uh, style, which you're, you're specializing in arm balances, which is like mm -hmm. badass. <laughs> and they're you. so fun. So fun. I love they it are. upside down too, which is so fun. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So for everybody that's high, that's on, thank you for being here. Yes, and uh, feel free to ask any questions. I'm talking to Yoga Shanna about her, um, you know, her journey in becoming an online teacher, her presence and her specializing. I'm just scrolling through all these yeah, people that are in here, specializing in um, arm balances. And, um, and I was saying, I think that you could be out there offering the service of having, you know, Branding, helping create branding, you know, in a consistent, beautiful, um, cohesive look for other yoga teachers. I don't know. I that's do what I it. saw. That's I what I saw. It. I could totally Thank see you. you doing that. But so nice Deb Barnes, none of it's an accident. Yeah. So, and they say, yeah, happy International Women's Day. Um, and Deb Farms. Do you know Deb? That's my sweet mother-in-law. Oh, she says she's so proud of you too. I, I love supportive. it. The last, the last couple of. Um, of interviews I've had, there have been other moms that have hopped on it too, which is so happy. Really, you need it's like this so tribe great. of people to support you. Yay. Yeah. Thank you, Sylvia. Happy Women's Day to you too. It's tomorrow, but we can start celebrating now. Acknowledge that, right? I think it's yep. March 8th tomorrow. Yep. Um, okay. So were you ever at any time in your life camera shy? I don't think so. You no. You weren't camera shy. Probably so not. So you were born comfortable in front of the lens. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I mean. Yeah, yeah. It's always, you know, a little cringy sometimes to look back and watch yourself. But I yeah. don't know. I've never so much felt that fear, that, that camera yeah. shy. No. Yeah. So what would you say, what do you think that was just something you were born with? Or, or let me ask you this. Are mm -hmm. you an extrovert by any chance? No. You are mm -mm. not. Okay. No, I'm, I'm one of those introverted like... extroverts where I enjoy being out with people people, but I have to come back in and recharge and be in my safe yeah. space and then head back out. I think they call that an introverted extrovert or there's like a specific name yeah. for it, but yeah. yeah. Me too. And then Liz, our last guest, she said exactly mm -hmm. the same thing, exactly yeah. the same thing as you. She likes to talk. She loves to be out there with people and then she's got her retreat and yes, then recharge, exactly. recharge yes. her batteries. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, so for you, your posts, what you share, your content, mm -hmm. Sylvia says, yeah, me too. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of people relate. Really... Do you tend to share videos of you in action? I, I know you do a lot of tutorials. And, yeah. and do you mix it up with talking to the camera? Or how do you decide what to post? I do. So most of the stuff that lives on my feed permanently, reels and that kind of thing, most of it is body it's not talking to the camera it's more of a tutorial where it's using my body in a, in a long shot um but i daily try and show up in stories where it's my face so that in my stories it feels like a personal connection you can get to know me get to know the people who are out there and that becomes a face-to-face -face connection but for the most part the stuff that lives permanently in my feed is just distance my body okay 
All right. So I've been curious about this because if you want your audience to get to know you mm -hmm. and you don't have the talking to the camera in your feed, it's only mm -hmm. on the stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that enough? That is why for me, it's every day. It's every day, oh. even if it's only one story. So I, I took a social media break this weekend. So I took a little break off, but aside from times when it's an intentional break, if you land on my profile, there's always going to be a story, maybe only one, but there's always going to be a story where it's my face and you can see oh. me okay. and that's intentional. Yeah. So that you can see who I am and how I talk and what I say, but it's just a little taste. You're not overwhelmed with like, oh my gosh, this girl's like coming at me. Okay. And then what are you talking about every day? How do you I usually, topics? I usually say, try and tie back to something I've posted recently. So if you land on my feed and then you show up in my stories, I'll mention like, hey, I share, I have this thought about sun salutations. This was yesterday. I have this thought about sun salutations. It's a little off the beaten path. Not everybody agrees with me. But here's why. Go ahead and take a look at my feed if you want to see the whole, the whole layout. So then I'm sending people back to my feed to take another look, to take a second look at something I'm referencing in my stories. So it's a little bit of a back and forth situation to keep people looking on my page for something that might interest them or speak to them. Okay. Yeah. And when did you start that? Like where in your like branding or creating your page, your presence? I started that pretty well off the top. I, I, I started my page many, many years ago before COVID and just um, this last fall really decided to commit and dive back in. So when I think about it from that perspective, so like last fall, I decided I'm going to commit, I'm going to dive back in, I'm going to do this. And that's when from the get go, I was like, okay, I need to show up several times a week. And once that was feeling good, it was then okay, show up every day. And I've, I've, I've honed in, I've got some, I've made some changes. And I have some specific ways that I do that now, not just like, okay, I'm here. I have, it's, it's mindful and I have some tips about that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, it's been from the beginning, like show up every day. Wow. And how much time does it take you to do this, to do the, the, the story and then the reels or all, your tutorials? All in, probably an hour a day, probably an hour a day. Oh, okay. But I sit and I do my reels late at night on the couch once my kids are in bed and I sort of do them in batches. So on a night where I've got more time to sit on the couch, I might spend more time. But in terms of every, on a day-to-day -day basis, posting that reel, checking in, um, on stories, replying to comments, that kind of thing, probably an hour on average. Yeah. Some days are going to be more and some days are going to be less. But yeah, I'd say an hour on average. Yeah. That's not bad. No, it's That's pretty good. It's yeah. 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 And then do you have, you've created a space that you, it seems like you always are recording your tutorials seem similar, the background am, and everything. I have a system. You have a system. My system, system is I teach at Yoga Nyla here in Folsom, California on every Tuesday morning. And the studio owner is so gracious. And so once my class finishes and the students leave, she has no problem with me staying a little bit after my class. And the studio space is just so, so beautiful and so much natural light. So when I teach on Tuesday, I show up with my class. I teach my class and I have a little post-it note of things I want to record, ideas that have been floating around in my head, something I want to address. Sometimes it's as simple. One of the checkbox to record is record your flow that you taught in class today. So I stay after I teach for anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, depending on the week, and set up my phone on a stack of yoga blocks <laughs> and move my mat around so the view changes a little and record a bunch of stuff. So then I've got that batched and waiting for me when I have time to sit down and edit and get that stuff ready to post. Right. Okay. And then you do voiceovers. Mm -hmm. or, I do voiceovers yeah. sometimes. Then, yeah. I don't do a ton of voiceovers, but I do all the words on the screen and the arrows and that sort of thing. Okay. After the fact. Oh, throughout that's the course great. of the week. Yeah. yeah. What do you use? What do you use to create your reels? I use InShot for my video editing. Okay. And I use, I still, InShot for all the video editing, speeding it up, slowing down, clipping clips together. I still prefer to use the native Instagram app itself for adding texts and graphics. Oh, okay. Okay. Because if you add the text within the Instagram space, then Instagram can use that text for search engine optimization as opposed to importing text from another, another app. Oh, right. So it works for me.
Yeah. Yeah. So good. Are you on Instagram only or are you also on TikTok or other I'm not on TikTok. Well, I'm on TikTok, but I don't really touch it so much. Okay. I'm, I really do prime most of my stuff on Instagram. I have longer videos that live on YouTube, but right now I'm just focused on Instagram and trying to grow that particular space and grow my email list. Okay. Great. So Instagram, YouTube, Mm -hmm. Are Instagram uh, reels, are they like, like snippets of what you would find on YouTube? And does Instagram, do you find that it gets you um, your YouTube followers? And, um, you know, your how do you get them to your email list? So how, how much does this help like with your business doing these Instagram doing reels? the Instagram reels makes a huge difference in my email signups, for sure. I feel like I have lost steam and as a whole the yoga community has lost steam in terms of needing full length yoga classes when, like we did during covid i had a lot more people moving to youtube during that time when everyone was looking for a, a top to bottom class mm -hmm. now i'm transitioning towards people um sharing my arm balance guide i have a arm balance guide which i describe as a weekend arm balance workshop, but delivered to your hands in a printed format with videos that combine. So I use these reels and this short information, these short tutorials as a way to direct people to my email list for more and a way to direct people to my arm balance guide. So I've shifted away from the filming and posting the long form classes. So mm -hmm. Instagram's a better fit with the shorter reels and the shorter digestible information, getting people to my email list. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what is this guide that you created? Is so I have, or what is it? Yes, I'm so glad you asked. I have an arm balance guide. It's called Arm Balance Exploration. It's a 24 page booklet. And I have two options. You can get it digital or you can get a printed copy. The printed copy is full color. It's beautifully professionally printed. And it has seven, six, no, seven, seven foundational arm balances. Because if you really look, most of the arm balances you see out there all point back to these seven foundational arm balances and different variations of those arm balances. So this workbook walks you through those seven foundational arm balances. There are photo step-by-step -step instructions, variations to try. There's some history about the Sanskrit and where the pose actually comes from, the name of the pose. And every pose has a QR code that you can click and go watch a 10, 12, 15 minute tutorial video walking you through that pose and its variations specifically. So it's like, wow. if you wanted to go to a two hour arm balance workshop on a Saturday afternoon, but maybe you don't have time or maybe you don't have a studio near you, or maybe that feels intimidating, this arm balance exploration workbook is just that kind of solution, but in your home, on your time, on, at your pace, in your comfort zone. Wow. That sounds amazing. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I love it. I would love for you to go check it out. Yeah. It's, I'm really proud of it. Wow. And this is everything that you created on your own, mm -hmm. designed it, created designed it, yeah. it, built the whole thing. It all matches my branding. It's, it's really, really cool. I'm really proud of it. Yeah. And is it something that it's, it's like a link in your profile and they just click, yes. it, click it there or mm -hmm. how do they find out? You can yeah. go, you can go to my bio. There's a link in my bio that goes right to it. Arm balance exploration. My website is yogashana.com and there's a huge banner all about it there. There's lots of ways to get it. Send me a DM. I'll point you in the right direction, but it's uh, easy to find because it's sort of the highlight of what I'm doing right now. So yeah. it's at the forefront of all of my spaces online. Oh, so good. So great. All right, so any tips for setting up the shot to one, creating your reels, mm -hmm. and then two, creating the stories where you're showing your face and talking to people? Yeah, so setting up the shot, pay attention to your lighting. That's the biggest thing. You wanna make sure the light's behind the camera so that your face is illuminated and your background's clean. But I mean, you can see here, I'm in my room. It's not like a blank white wall. Yeah. But when I yeah, have yeah. access to the beautiful space in my yoga studio, I, I, the yoga studio I teach, I love to teach against their bright wall and the light coming in. So number one, pay attention to the lighting. That's, it's photography 101 and it applies here. You're a little mini videographer when you put your face on camera and when you record those mm -hmm. reels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then the stories mm -hmm. showing your face. 
I know, probably lighting still, but any tips lighting about still. that? So my biggest tips for showing up on stories, I, my first tip would be to prepare, but don't overthink it. Prepare, but just a little bit. Like, just think to yourself for a hot second, okay, what am I going to say? That's my number one tip, prepare. But my number two tip would be let yourself be human. Like, I try and only record them maybe twice. Like if I have to re-record it once because I totally stumble over my words, that's okay. But try and give yourself just like one do over. Because if you keep retrying and retrying and retrying, you start to sound a little robotic. Let yourself be human. Let yourself stumble over your words. Let yourself say, um, let your kid go running by the background. Because that's what people want to see is that you're a real person and you're authentic and you can be, and you can be human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 All right. So, and I know you said you haven't really yourself experienced camera shyness mm -hmm. at all, but what would be three tips to gain camera confidence? Three tips to gain camera confidence. I would say practice, just practice every single day. Even if it's not perfect, post it anyways, mm -hmm. give yourself mm -hmm. a shot. Um, start small. If you want to start with a close friends list on Instagram, or if you want to record something and post it and only leave it up for an hour, and then you want to take it down, start small, something that you feel comfortable with. That's not overwhelmingly scary. Also, the last thing I would say is start small in terms of time. You'll notice Instagram now gives you 60 seconds in, uh, to record an Instagram story. It used to only be 15 seconds. So start with just that 15 seconds. Start small so that it doesn't feel quite so intimidating and quite so scary. Um, on that same note, 60 seconds is a, is a chunk of time that Instagram gives you for a reason. If you're talking for more than 60 seconds into multiple slides, you're going to lose your audience. Mm -hmm. keep, that, keep that as a guideline. Keep that 60 second time clock as it runs on Instagram stories as you're like, okay, what do I have to say? I should be able to get it out in 60 seconds yeah i didn't know that i didn't know mm -hmm. that we have six i thought we were still at 15 nope. seconds. you have you have 60 now they've changed it but it is not a bad idea yeah. to stick to that 15 that you used to have there's a reason for that it's a re there's a reason your audience's attention only goes so far right. so use that right. use that as a guideline yeah 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 so good so good and do you have courses i just i know you have this workbook but mm -hmm. do you also offer other you have other offerings I that don't. are online? Yeah. No, right mm -hmm. now, my arm balance exploration is my big offering, and that's the one I'm sticking with. I am kind of brainstorming. My husband asked me recently, okay, so you, you, you've launched your arm balance guide because that was the, a, a big, big step for me. What are you going to do next? So one of my goals this year was to come up with something. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is yet, so I've been brainstorming whether it's a course or whether it's another guide of some kind. Um, yeah, I'm kind of brainstorming yeah. where to go next and what to do next. I'm, I'm going to throw out there because I can see you having an app. Oh, really? That's very mm -hmm. kind of you. Mm -hmm. That's very kind of you. Yeah. I'll have to play yeah. with, you know, what feels good and what sounds good. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I don't know. Might be an interesting, yeah. interesting yeah. option. Um, let's see what else so something that I am in the practice of is, you know, I'm interviewing, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and you're doing the, a great all job, the, the different guests. Thank you so much. And uh, I've been trying to also tighten it up because, you know, even though it's so fun to talk to people, you know, I, I love that reminder that, you know, we don't all have time. I know the last couple of guests, some were 45 minutes. I think Liz mm -hmm. and I, I mean, we know each other. We went over an hour. It's like, okay, Liz, we got to wrap this mm -hmm. up. <laughs> We got to wrap this up. So how do you keep, um, well, how do you keep your content fresh? Mm -hmm. Like decide what you're going to keep. And then, um, and then just, just focus. You, you keep it, I guess, to the 90 seconds in your wheels or do you, or you, reals, do you yeah. go shorter? So I have a few thoughts about that. Um, specifically your first question, how, how do I keep my content fresh? I am always taking, Speaking, as I write, my, my primary creativity is writing my yoga class for each Tuesday when I teach. And I take bits and pieces as I'm writing that class, like, oh, this is interesting. I could share this online. So I had a student just today after I taught class go, 
you said that warrior two thing. And I remember that from your Instagram this week. And I said, yes, oh. now you're onto my secret. When I teach my class and I plan my class, I'm picking out information that I could share in bite-sized pieces here on Instagram. So whatever your field is, as you work through that field and you're working in your creative, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and come up with something different for Instagram. You can take that inspiration and just little ideas and take it to Instagram. That's where my content comes from. Mm -hmm. In terms of the time, again, a real yes, you have up to 90 seconds. And I can tell you from experience, my longer content, anything that gets up to 45, 50 seconds, it just doesn't do as well. Mm -hmm. So you wanna think bite-sized. So here's my example. Um, I wanted to share part of when I was planning my class for next week is I'm talking about the uh, posterior and anterior tilt of your pelvis. So I'm like, this is great. I'm going to share this. We're going to talk about this. And we're going to talk about this. But now I have a whole yoga class to present that information. But for Instagram, how can I make that super duper bite size? Like the tiniest piece of that, we're going to, I'm going to explain in a reel coming up next week, what it means to anterior tilt your pelvis. That's it. Just the one motion. Mm -hmm. This is a neutral pelvis. This is an anterior tilt, the end. And then later in the week, what I plan to do is say, okay, so what poses do you use an anterior tilt to your pelvis? So you might have this spectacular idea that's a big idea, mm -hmm. but you've got to shrink it and make it as small as you can, just one little tiny piece to share it online. Sometimes you seven seconds, nine seconds, I try and really stay under 20. It doesn't always happen, but under 20 seconds is really kind of, I think, what the sweet spot is. Yeah. Oh, that's such a great tip. I, um, I was just teaching yoga teacher training this morning, mm -hmm. and this topic exactly came up. So we were practicing cueing mm -hmm. and practicing, you know, less is more. Right. And using essential language. And actually the topic of anterior and posterior you know, pelvic mm -hmm. tilt actually came up too. Great. And there's only so much that our students can absorb at a time, right? right. You know, to right. let it give it some time to marinate and land in their bodies mm -hmm. and like explore it. And uh, that's such a great tip because I'm always thinking, gosh, is it complete if I'm only giving them eight seconds or, but yeah, do a little bit this week, do a little bit next week. Do a little mm -hmm. bit. You don't have to do it all in right. that 90 seconds in that one right. reel. And because I'm so sure. smart the way you're doing it, because then you're actually creating more content. Right. right. And that's exactly it. I don't need to create. I could easily fill 90 seconds explaining posterior tilt, anterior tilt, when it's good, when it's bad, when to use it, when not to use it, what it feels like. But that's so much information that could literally cover three weeks worth of content for Instagram if I was that excited about anterior and posterior tilt. Um, so break it up into pieces and use that and continue to explore and deepen it and also see what resonates with your audience. I've like presented some things that just didn't go as well as I expected. I'm like, okay, well, I'm glad I didn't spend 90 seconds and hours putting together a small film about this topic <laughs> when my people just aren't really interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. So good. Yeah. Another, another um, thought that came up this morning is like when we're teaching our students and you put them in a pose, especially if we're flowing in a vinyasa mm -hmm. class, right? We're not trying to get it perfect all the time right. in every single right. pose because they're going to come back mm -hmm. like class after class after class. And so this week they figure out how to like press their right foot down into the mat. And then the next week, maybe they'll, they'll figure out, oh, what am I doing with my left foot? And it's like every mm -hmm. week, you know, so giving those different right. cues. There's, there's so, building blocks. I mean, building blocks. I go to, I've been to hundreds and thousands of yoga classes in my life and I still go to class and a teacher will give me an anatomical cue that I haven't heard before. Mm -hmm. And you learn something mm -hmm. new. So if you're not going to provide so much information all at one time, it's just little by little adding to somebody's journey. Maybe they take one thing away from your page on a given week. Yeah. So great. Well, this has been so great chatting with you. So informative. Thank you. And, uh, and I do, I actually do like sincerely, I do want to talk to you about branding because I'm like yeah. curious about that for myself. And yeah, um, I have ideas yeah, and thoughts and mistakes I've yeah. made and things that have done, gotten well. So yeah, reach out. Yeah. And that's how we learn, right? And that's mm -hmm. what we end up teaching. Yeah.
as we've learned from our mistakes. It's like, learn from my mistakes. Let me save you the time. <laughs> I mean, exactly. the time and the money by, let me share. Exactly. I saw yeah. one girl online this week and somebody, and she's very successful in a different space. And somebody asked her, what would you do differently if you started your Instagram journey and started your business over? And she said, nothing. And I was like, I have never in my life heard someone say I would do nothing different. I think all of us learn from those experiences and those mistakes and what works and what doesn't work. So right. I right. am not someone who say I would do nothing different. Yeah. I have all kinds of uh, things that I would do different and that sort of right. thing. That's how yeah. we learn. Yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, if we didn't do it that particular way, we might not have learned from the mistakes, right? Exactly. We wouldn't have, we wouldn't have that empathy. We wouldn't have the stories to say, Oh, let me tell you the mistake I made. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> this didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> so let's do Absolutely. this. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So anybody that's on before we wrap up, if anybody has any questions, feel free to put it in the comment box. Thank you so much for joining. Um, and, and I want to just any summary of what you want to share to leave anything around camera confidence, online presence, anything. And then, um, and then also, I think you've already said it, but feel free to repeat where people can reach you and follow Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So my biggest piece of advice around camera confidence is just to don't overthink it. Don't overthink it. Put your face out there. Start in small bite-sized chunks so that it feels more comfortable to you and practice and just get out there and and do your best and come back to it. And an Instagram story only lasts 24 hours. So if you don't like the way it looked, you start over the next day. It was only 24 hours later. So um, thank you for letting me be here. It's something that I'm like learning. And so I, I, I really appreciate some of the feedback that you've given me. It, it feels like, oh, you're honoring some of the things that I have like been working, working so, so hard at. So <laughs> You can find me, I have a website, yogashanna.com. Everything along with my branding is all Yoga Shanna. It's all super consistent. So if you see me on Instagram, if you see my website, we're all the same. It's all the same handle. And I've got my arm balance exploration guide, which is out and available. And I'm so excited about it. And I'd love for you to take a look. That's at the link in my bio or on my website. Yeah. So great. And you're in Sacramento. I'm in Sacramento. And Folsom mm -hmm. at what's your in, studio? I teach in Folsom at Yoga Nyla. Um, it used to be called Zuda Yoga. A lot of people oh, know it yeah. by Zuda Yoga, uh, but the ownership has changed. It's uh, Yoga Nyla now, a beautiful studio with so many talented teachers. I love, if you don't come to my class, let me know if you're coming because I'm there all the time. So Yoga Nyla is in Folsom and I'd love to see you there. Yeah, when what are you teaching? What's I teach class? Tuesday mornings at 830 in the morning. Great. Awesome. I don't know that student. I'm familiar with Zuda, uh -huh. um, especially associated with um, Jessica, Jessica yeah. Coratan, right? Yeah. yeah. When she was there. Yeah. And um, I have, a, I don't know if you know Spotted Dog Yoga I up in Folsom. I do. I do know of it. Mm -hmm. I've seen yeah. it. Yeah. I'm friends with um, the owners, Nick. Nick okay. and um, Katie Clark, mm -hmm. they also are certified Baptist yoga teachers. Right. Um, like I am. So I don't even think they live in Folsom anymore. I think they live somewhere else, but they still, but they still own it. So a great yoga community up there. Such a great yoga community. And the yeah. owner of Yoga Nyla is Diana Vitantonio, and she is a student of Baron Baptiste as well. So just really strong yoga roots around here. Really, really strong. Yeah. So Diane, what is her last name? Diana Vitantonio. Antonio, I'm wondering if I know, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us know each other. It I is, mean, it's, right? a, it's a it's big like a community, but not that, but not that big. So, um, yeah. oh, that's so awesome. Awesome. Yeah, just great roots. So much strong yoga. It's wonderful. Yeah. So good. Oh my gosh. Well, this was really fun. And I'm actually going to give myself a pat on the back because I am like meeting one of my intentions, which is not to let this stretch out to like an hour or well more. Done. <laughs> I feel well like we kind of got You're to this and we're, we're going to wrap up. And um, who is this? Alani? Alani hey, Kirkus. Alani. Thanks for an awesome nice class this morning. So you've got a friend. Yep. Oh, so great. Yeah. So if anybody else has any comments before we wrap up, thank you so much for being here today. I am going to say um, my next guest is actually this Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, if anybody knows Allison Buchanan, you may know her actually, or know oh, of her. Okay. She's Yogi Go Up. She does a okay. lot of um, handstanding 
and she does awesome. a lot of um, arm balances out. too and different. She used to live here in the Bay Area. She is a um, she's a Baptist. Um, certified teacher amongst other things and mm -hmm. she um, she's up in Seattle now and she used to be a news reporter or something down here Anyways, oh, I'm wow. gonna find out more I'm gonna find out more to hear Wonderful. her tips about um, project project see my face so that's Friday March 10th at 1 p.m Perfect. and happy International Women's Day saying it ahead of time I know it's tomorrow and um, full moon those of you that yes. are into the full moon Put your crystals out. You know, you can see I just did a reel on like an affirmation or ritual. If you want to let that shit go, you know, whatever mm -hmm. you need to do, mm -hmm. <laughs> let it go. Love it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and check out Yoga Shanna's page. Yay. And um, I'll be I'll be saving this so people can watch the recording. Perfect. And I'm also putting uh, the, the recordings over on my YouTube channel. I don't have much on my Wonderful. YouTube channel, but I'm starting to populate it with different interviews. I need help with branding and focusing, Shanna. I can help with that. <laughs> you reach out. I can help with that. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks so much. All right. Thank you for your time. Okay. Take care. Bye. Bye. See you.